Tinibu's minister, Matawale, was fully involved in the banditry activities happening in the northern part of the country. The current governor, Dawood Alawa, reviews. Hello guys, welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. You know, it is only, I'm going to play a video so I can listen from the horse's mouth from the incumbent and the current governor of Zamfara State. We had the level of banditry there is, is something else. I have reviewed what his predecessor being Matawale, who is currently Tinibu's minister of defense. And how he was, you know, involved in the bandit and every other thing. This is what the governor said. You know, we live in a country whereby, you know, everything goes. We live in a country whereby, you know, at Balami Tinibu rewards people that are being investigated. Before Tinibu appointed Ababio, Matawale, and even Gandu Jazz, the APC chairman, these people were under investigation by the EFCC. But still yet, Balami Tinibu went ahead to, you know, appoint them as minister just to compensate them. In developed nations, people that are under serious investigations and probes, you know, shouldn't even be seen anywhere close to public offices but with this is nigeria this man is not like he, he, he doesn't have a case this matawali he has a case with the efcc he has a case with a lot of it between went ahead after all the investigations allegations against him you, you went ahead to make him the minister of defense why not conclude your investigations if he is clean fine you can make him the minister probably in your next probably anytime you want to make him your minister but not when he's still under investigation and investigations have not been concluded let me play the video so I can listen from the horse's mouth what Governor Dawood Alawa said boldly without you know, mincing words. These are his words. These are his words. Let me play the video so we'll come back with the set and analyze every other thing. There were a lot of issues in the past with my predecessor. You know, in fact, uh, let me say this very categorical. If I were him, I would resign and face all the allegations against me. And that would have been more honorable because from all the uh, information we're getting, my predecessor was fully involved in some of these banditry issues. Typical is the fact that that was a permanent secretary when his children were abducted. And it was unfortunate that he had to pay ransom through the government house. And it was also very clear based on all the allegations that bandits were being kept at government house. You know, there are so many issues. So for me, honestly, if I were him, I will step aside and face this allegation until I clear my name before I come back and continue my job. That should have been more honorable. And how can you imagine with all these allegations against him and he's still the Minister of Defense? I mean, that is unfair. This man could have been honorable, stay aside, face all these allegations, clear his name, and then come back and continue to do whatever he wants to do. Whether he wants to remain as minister or he wants to do something else, that would have been more honorable as far as I'm concerned. If I'm in that position, believe me, I'll put in my residential letter. Now from the video you just watched, you hear what the people, the, the man was saying, that some of the bandits, we are, we are even in the government house we are even counting the government house that the government had to use the government's uh, 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 account to be paying ransom to these bandits you know what would tell people that the banditry and the insecurity in the northern part of the country is being sponsored and some of them are exploiting that particular opportunity to make money millions and billions of naira for themselves and the people doubt it my problem with this particular revelation and every other thing is that this particular information and uh, uh, allegations and accusations were leveled even before he was made the minister why would, why would, to tell you the level of corruption in this evil political party being APC, why would this particular man be allowed to pass a security check before he was appointed as the minister? A man that has these heavy allegations and hefty allegations that must be, you know, thoroughly investigated and make sure that probably if he's guilty, fine. If he's not guilty, the investigations have not been finalized. You could hear the governor telling him that the honorable thing he should have done is to st step aside. No, I'm not even blaming him to step aside. I'm blaming the person who is Balami Tinibu, who saw all these things and went ahead to appoint him as the Minister of Defense. That this particular person, that a sitting governor is accusing this particular man, even before he became the sitting governor. A lot of links and a lot of things have been said against this particular man. Allow investigations and independent investigations to be done. If he's found guilty, in fact, you shouldn't even appoint him in anything until he is proven not to be guilty. But Balami Tinibu, because he wanted to Zamfara State, because election, because of 2027 and co, he went and appointed people. The same way he appointed a, uh, a lot of people that have a, a lot of criminal cases uh, or, or bribery or corruption cases with the EFCC are serving in Balami Tinibu's government. You can see how, how the sham of leadership we have in the country led by Balami Tinibu. Now look at what a sitting governor is. If the international communities get to hear what a sitting governor is saying, 
that an incumbent minister that is working for parliament in Ibu has a hand allegedly in the banditry in the northern part, especially in Zamfara state. What do you think international communities will do? This could have saved us the shame if Balame Tinibu allowed this man to be thoroughly investigated even before appointing him. But this is the, this is the uh, country we live in. This is the country we live in whereby the rule of law is not respected, the rule of law is not followed. Rather, politicians, you know, bastardize our constitutions, bastardize our rule of law just to, you know, favor their own political interests. Most of the appointments Balame Tinibu made in 2023 after he was announced by INEC was political compensations. These people, most of them had cases that they, are, they should have been investigated or probably proved pro, pro for. But Balami Tinibu government you know, appointed them and gave them an indirect immunity from being prosecuted or proved about these ongoing cases and every other thing. You could imagine how shameful, you could imagine how shameful, how embarrassing this, this whole entire situation is. Honestly speaking with you, I can't even read this because it is, it is really, really shameful and embarrassing. Well, let's move over to uh, the next story that we'll have for you guys today. So guys, Bolame Tinibu is in a very big trouble. You know, yesterday I told you guys that Obasanjo went and, uh, and, had, and had a meeting with IBB, Ibrahim Badamashi, Babangeda, and Abu Salam. You know, and, and a lot of people have been wondering what is the essence of this particular meeting and what, was, uh, and what did they discuss and what was the conclusion of this particular meeting. Now, a lot of reports have actually been revealed, which I'm going to show you. Enough, you know, Bolame Tinibu will not even smell 2027 uh, presidential election. In fact, he will not, as a matter of fact, be the president after 2027 because the agreement and a lot of things have been finalized. Let me show you something. After the meeting yesterday, before I, I show you a report that was actually disclosed about what Obasanjo, IBB, and uh, Abu Islami discussed yesterday about Bolame Tinibu's government and how to uh, make sure that Bolame Tinibu does not return back to 2027. Now, as you can see on the screen, you know, uh, after they had that particular meeting, Abu Islami came out and you know, voiced his anger and said that it is getting out of control, that the economy and Nigeria economy and crashing economy is getting out of control. This is what General Abu Islami Abubakar worries over economic hardship. Now, in proper context, let me even show you a report that was actually released about what Abu Salami, uh, uh, IBB, and uh, uh, Olushe Gwabas and Joy. Remember, these are the three former military heads we have in the country and what they discussed about Balami and Tribu's government. Now, look at what they discussed, as you can see on the screen. Uh, as you can see on the screen, they said something that it is over for Tinibu. This is a, a report that was actually re released by a PDP personnel that got an information about what these three people discussed yesterday. He said it is over for Tinibu. Exclusive o OBJ, IBB, Abu Salami, Mu, Atiku, and will be as replacement of Tinibu in 2027 presidential pool. Move to install S president, S net president being David Mark as PDP national chairman. This is what they are trying to say. Now they said something that in, in a deft move to unseat President Bola Tinibu ahead of the 2027 pool. The trio of former Nigerian leaders Olushe Gobasanjo, Ibrahim Babangida, Abu Islami Abubakar, and top military brass are already looking in the direction of former Vice President Atuk Abubakar to come to the rescue of a country. This, so the, uh, this particular report equally claimed that also on the list of the power brokers who met behind closed doors in Mina last weekend is the presidential candidate of the Labour Party being in the 2003 uh, election, being Mr. P2B. They said P2B was part of the people that actually met in that particular uh, 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 meeting, an, an indoor meeting at Mina in Mina. They said that the, that, that the Nigerian civil war generals who are consigned over the imminent collapse of the opposition People's Democratic Party have launched an assault on the former governor of River State, Nelson Wiki, and his allies to save the party from extinction. They said, Platinum Post, these are the people that are actually reporting what transpired and probably with the meeting and the discussion that was actually held between Obas and Jai Bibi and Abu Salami. They said, The Platinum Post reports that the three influential former leaders and former national security advisor, General Alihu Gusa, Gusau, you know, met in Mina, the capital of N uh, Niger State, recently to strategize on how to take over the party. According to an impeccable source privy to the details of the meeting, the top retired general's meeting has two agendas, which we are to rescue the party structure from PDP and search for a suitable presidential candidate that will defeat the incumbent president, Bala Ahmed Tinibu. They said the sources hinted, the source stressed, it was gathered that at the closed door uh, party, the trial of Babangida fondly, fondly referred to as IBB, Abu Slimi and, and uh, Gusau, you know, rooted for former Vice President Atiku Abubakar to fly the party's flag, while Obasanjo can vow support for the presidential candidate of the Labour Party being uh, on the 2023 election, being Mr. P2B. This is what these particular people are actually reporting, that in the meeting, that uh, these, these people being uh, uh, Babangida, uh, being IBB, Abu Slimi and Gusau rooted for Vice President Atiku Abubakar to be the flag bearer of the party that they, they, they want to reform, the so-called PDP party they want to reform. Why Obasanjo you know, stood firm in support of Mr. P2B that he wants to support that P2B should be the flag bearer of PDP in the 2027 presidential election. You can see that plans are already 
ongoing you know this report if you if you if you listen attentively you know that this report is being uh, uh narrated in, a, in in favor of some pdp people because this is this is one of their platforms but they're actually revealing what these people actually discuss and the meeting uh ibb obasanjo and uh gusa and, and, and uh abu Slami actually had you know tinibu is in trouble that is why after the meeting this particular man came out and you know blushed the that the economy is the ec economic uh, economy of nigeria has been bastardized and destroyed that means they, they have lost hope in and uh, lost hope and every other thing in Bolami Tinibu's government.